here's an opportunity for you to bring up questions, to talk to the CAC members, and I will now hand it over to the chair of the CAC, Frank Gurley. Come on up, Frank. All right, thank you everyone for coming in to attend the meeting. Uh, the purpose of the meeting is to solicit public comment on the, um, on the uh, urban revitalization plan and the amendments to it, okay? Um, to start things off first, I think we're gonna have Rob May come in and just give you a brief overview and explanation of what the 40R is. So, Rob? And the opportunity zone. Ab absolutely. Opportunity zone. So, um, as part of the tax at how, I'm sorry, I should start over again. I'm Rob May, I'm Director of Planning and Economic Development for the City of Brockton. And if I'd have known we were gonna be on camera tonight, I would have, uh, I was off today. I was off today, so. Um, yeah, the city means that much. So, um, we um, have successful, successfully established a um, urban renewal district about three years ago. And uh, you can see some of the work that we've been doing downtown. Uh, Robert Jenkins, as the head of the Redevelopment Authority, has been um, attracting new developers to sites that have been identified in the urban renewal uh, plan. And uh, as a matter of fact, there are three sites that are in the plan that are under construction or will be under construction uh, this <coughs> summer. So there's a lot of activity going on. Now, um, also in the last couple of years, some things have changed in the federal government uh, as part of the um, tax cut and jobs bill, they, the federal government has created a new program called Opportunity Zones. And um, I'll, I'll start out by saying I'm not a tax attorney or an accountant, but uh, the Opportunity Zones are a way to um, defer uh, rollover um, uh, capital gains to reduce your uh, capital gains basis and then potentially if you've invested um, up to 10 years in an opportunity zone you can um, eliminate all new capital gains on the development project. Uh, it works out really nicely for real estate projects and that is one of the reasons why we chose to expand the, uh, or, or would want to expand the downtown urban renewal district. Site control is critical because the opportunity zones only last for the next three years. And so you need to make an investment in the next three years in order to capture the maximum uh, tax benefit out of this program. And we were lucky enough to have four uh, opportunity zones identified here in Brockton, two of which are downtown. One is covered by um, our downtown urban renewal district, and the other is uh, west, east of the tracks, uh, and includes areas around the CSX yards. And that is also an area that we are um, currently producing um, a, uh, a district plan and, a, or, and potentially an urban renewal plan that will be coming back to the CAC. So because site control is so critical, uh, one of the most important tools that we have out of the urban renewal process is uh, the site acquisition and potential use of eminent domain. And um, I will let Robert uh, address that in a little bit more detail, but um, we've identified projects up here that could become um, uh, available for acquisition and the urban renewal or the, the development authority uh, would like to work with the existing property owners to make deals happen at those sites. And uh, urban renewal is one of those ways of, one of those tools that make this all work out. So um, as the uh, city begins to market its downtown to the investment community and because of the opportunity zones, uh, we're here tonight to talk about an amendment uh, that would identify some additional properties for acquisition or potential acquisition. Um, you'll notice, and Frank will take you through it, but we do not change any of the boundaries of the uh, urban renewal plan. Uh, we're just identifying some uh, additional properties. So with that, I will um, turn this back over to Frank Curley, Great. Chairman of the CAC. Thank you. Some of the things to, to start off with, um, it's a very exciting time in Brockton. 
okay, there's a lot of building going on, there's a lot of development going on. Um, we'd all much rather see uh, jobs in, in place, we'd much rather see equipment working on buildings and stuff like that to rehabilitate them and to bring them into back into the tax rolls and all that good stuff. Some of the things that are um, being worked on, um, either actively or behind the scenes are, are, that are eminent, uh, 19 Main Street, uh, the BRA has got that, and uh, they're looking to develop that as a mixed-use project. Uh, 121 uh, Main Street, uh, Naval Works has that. That is um, where Prava was last year. Uh, that property, uh, within the next couple of months, will be uh, putting a shovel in the ground and getting started. Okay, the Petronelli uh, Municipal Garage, um, we can see that happening now. The construction is ongoing with that. The Petronelli Gym and 93 Center Street have both been sold, and they are uh, scheduled for development for residential with retail in it. Um, 47 West Elm Street, a very exciting project on uh, West Elm. That's the, um, the old burned-out building next to the hotel. Um, that is in the construction phase now. Construction is ongoing. Uh, 42 units going in there, 40 some odd units yeah, going in, uh, market rate housing. And the Lincoln School uh, Naval Works is uh, uh, looking at that for providing a, some senior rental low income housing as well. All right, so, um, and then um, we've got some other things going on. Um, but those are the ones that uh, are the most exciting and, and on the, uh, being worked on right now, okay? Um, as Rob said, none, nothing has changed with the boundaries of the um, urban re revitalization plan. But what, has, what we're here for is to solicit comments on some of the additional properties that could be acquired okay, by um, the BRA and for further development, okay. So those properties are um, cross-hatched in blue, okay, and um, uh, those are the properties that uh, I guess that you'd call them more priority properties that, that we're looking at, okay. Um, properties that are cross-hatched in the red are properties for um, acquisition and disposition according to the original plan which was submitted uh, two years ago. Okay, so now we're coming in and we're looking at uh, adding more properties to be developed. Okay, um, so we're, we're looking for comments um, regarding those properties. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yes. Are those maps available online? Rob, they, are these available online? They are available. They, they are. are available. Uh, on, it will on, be on the DRA's website. Okay. okay. All right. Properties, go right ahead, Frank. I'm sorry. All right. Um, moving on to, to this map here, um, the green hatched uh, um, properties are properties to be rehabilitated. Okay. Um, there, there are, these are properties that we're going to look at for um, uh, keeping the form and function of them, but having them rehabilitated. So these are these are properties that need some work. Okay, there's some properties that are scheduled for uh, demolition, and they're mostly along uh, the Franklin Street area. Okay, and then there are properties that could be demolished. They're, they're properties that could be acquired, and then taken down and um, the lots would be made available for other um, development, okay? Um, again, we're staying within the footprint of the redevelopment, um, the um, urban revitalization area, okay? Um, we have new construction, okay, which um, coincides with, with this map here. The new construction is, um, cross-hatched in, I guess it's orange or tan, okay, and then proposed new construction where these properties 
would be scheduled for demolition, new construction would be proposed for those areas. Okay. Um, so at that point, um, are there any questions at this point? Craig, we have how many properties we're adding to the amendment, approximately? I, th I think it was 42? No, 32. 32, 32 I'm sorry. <laughs> 32 <laughs> that we're adding to the, to the amendment. Uh, most of those properties are either vacant and or just in need of repair. One of the things we want to make clear, you come in this way, just come in and sign in. You don't have to, but you should go ahead and sign in. Um, <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot. In most cases, we have a camera that moves with you. Um, yeah. Um, mo most of these properties, the the ones we're looking to amend, are either vacant. Um, some of them are occupied. The key for us here, for the redevelopment authority, though, is that we're looking for to add these because one, as Rob had mentioned, the opportunity zone. Um, we're fortunate, Rob, that there were two opportunity zone projects in Brockton? Yes. You should, yeah, <laughs> speak in the mic. So there are two opportunity zone projects in Brockton. And we've heard and gone through the state where they're having trouble just finding one. Our urban revitalization district, as Rob and Frank has pointed out, the boundaries hasn't changed. And what we, and here's the process, and we should have went through this first. The process is, is that this public meeting is like the first phase there are going to be comments, and we're looking for your comments. For those of you, how many people here work in the district, in that boundary? Raise your hands high, please. Thank you. How many people live in this boundary? Okay. Here's the thing. We need more public participation, in, in, uh, and this is just a meeting. It's not a hearing, but we need more participation of those people who live in the boundary. Um, because as we go through this process, of redeveloping and having development going on in the city, and you guys will see a lot more of it as we get into the warmer months. Um, it's gonna be critical to get your input. This is just the first meeting. The CAC has to do a presentation to the board next Wednesday on this meeting. Once the board approves whatever recommendation they have, then we have to go to city council. And how many city councilors do we have here this evening? Show of hand, Council Bodegar, we know you're here. Okay. Council Monaghan, thank you. Um, it's key that we, that we have, and they will have to hold a public hearing, okay? So it'll be a public hearing for the city council, but for us it's more of a public meeting and getting information so we can bring recommendations, not just to the board, but also to the planning board, Rob? Yes, sir. Has to also have a meeting? as well, and they'll have to approve this. So this is gonna be a, a process that we go through through the summer. So since we have most of the people that work here, I saw more hands for people who work in this district, um, we really do need your comments as well, because a lot of you have probably been working in this district for a long time, you've seen a lot of changes. How many people here are just residents of Brockton? I want your hands held high, please. Thank you. Um, <laughs> You guys should definitely, because as the downtown changes, it will affect the city as a whole. So it's very important that we also get your input. Did everybody sign in here? Yes? Not a heads? Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Um, so your comments here are very important. First step, we need your comments. There are approximately 30 to 32 identified parcels, properties that we've identified. There are some also, some potential development that is happening as we speak. Frank mentioned 19 Main and stepped away. There's also Frederick Douglass, the purple buildings of what I, I call the purple buildings. There are interested developers in that building. There's developers also interested as of today into the Grayson Hotel, surprisingly. Um, but there's going to be a lot of activity because of the opportunity zone, but also because of the market has changed. With that said, if you have any comments, don't be shy, because I'm not. Step up to the mic, make your comments. Zayas is taking notes. CAC members, can you raise your hand and introduce yourselves, please? You know Frank Gurley. Janet Trask. Martin Gurley. Hey, Rob. Hey, Rob. Hey, Rob. Hey, Rob. 
Thank you. Um, are we missing anyone? Yes. Yeah. Eunice Depina, uh, who works for Harbor One, who's also on the CAC members. So with that said, I'm going to turn it back over to Frank. Please, you, we need questions. We need comments. I don't want to hear any negative, but we'll take them, <laughs> good or bad. All right. Excellent. Any questions? Counselor? Could you explain the Opportunity Zone again, how that's going to work? Sure, May. The Federal Opportunity Zone is uh, a, a program that was created from the, uh, the tax cut and jobs bill. And basically, if people have um, uh, un... Uh, God, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm sorry. But on, on, uh, if you have capital gains on an asset, let's say you own 100 shares of Apple, um, if you were to sell that right now, you would have to pay tax on that as a capital gains tax. But this new program allows you to roll that gain over into a new investment within one of the opportunity zones. And there's close to 4,000 across the country right now. And if you roll that uh, investment, let's say you made a uh, $100 gain, which if it's Apple, it's going to be more than that. But if you have a $100 uh, gain, and you invest that into the opportunity zone, you do not have to pay tax on that $100 um, gain for seven years. Also, if you've held it for five years in the zone, you get a 10-point uh, reduction in the basis. So instead of having to pay tax on, nine, uh, on 100, $100, $100, you only pay tax on $90. If you hold that investment for another two years for seven years you get another five um, uh, percentage points dropped off of there so now you only have to pay tax on 85 percent uh, or 80 dollars instead of the whole hundred dollars now you're invested into a project it has to be an asset it could be a company it could be real estate um, a couple of other things that that uh, the federal government will allow that property or that project, that company, is going to generate profit. And that's going to come back to you. And at some point in time, when you sell that property or you sell that investment, you would have to pay capital gains on that. But if you take that same capital gains that you've rolled over, that $100, and you've invested into a new project, at the end of 10 years, let's say that that new investment's worth $1,000. You sold that. You don't pay any tax on that $1,000, and you only pay uh, capital gains tax on $80 of the original $100. He sounds like a tax attorney. <laughs> it's fun reading, really. That's cool. <laughs> so forget about tax law. Let's talk about Brockton and Irving. <laughs> Revitalization plan. Um, comments, um, please. The question I have with the Hotel Grayson and the building across the street from that, with those being um, looked at by potential developers, will those be allowed to be torn down or do we have? Not on my watch. Okay, great. What about the Porter building? No, Porter building's beautiful. Okay. He, he's an architect, he likes that. It's not up to us whether it gets torn down or not. The BRA is just a facilitator of having it developed. Okay. At this point in time, both of those are being entertained as rehabs. This one's a historic at, rehab, one's a... I, I should mention that as part of our um, downtown action strategy, we've identified several um, properties that should be on uh, the National Register of Historic Preservation. And we have now um, submitted applications for two new historic districts down, uh, that would be downtown. And both, all three of those buildings are within the district boundaries and are contributing properties to that historic district. We, we have a lot of beautiful historic buildings. We want to keep them. Okay. We want to work with the property owners um, to either do it the project themselves, to find partners to work with, um, or if they're, they're going to uh, uh, sell them as investments, then we need to make sure that the people who come in are working with us. Just like 93 Center Street, that's all being done to national historic standards. And so uh, we want to preserve what we have. And the Porter Building, where is it? 
The Porter Block is on the corner of Court and Montello. It's a two-story building. Um, it's across from Avon Auto. Oh. And uh, it's a... Yes, it's where Stan's used to. I used to walk by it on my way to high school when it was on. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> but it's our, it's been inventoried. It's a beautiful building. And what about 36 Main Street? I know that you know when the state eventually moves um, into their new building where the gambling property is now, that will become available for rehab. Yeah. And we would like to work with the new owner to restore what was once a, um, a retail facade on the first floor. You can see where they've tried to modernize it and make it a little bit more um, office-y. Mm -hmm. um, so we hope to, to go back. The same with the Petronelli building. That's going to be historic restoration also. Right. Okay. Right. Rob, just a, que a question or a comment. Isn't that part of the seven-layer dip that you referred to? Oh, oh the seven-layer dip. That. Thanks, thanks. Um, yeah, I don't know. Somebody mentioned seven-layer dip, and, it, and the, the, the name stuck. But what we've done in Brockton is um, instituted a whole series of incentive programs in downtown to help us um, uh, attract investment, work with the existing property owners, to make rehabilitation happen. And so the historic district is one of those uh, layers of the seven layer dip, uh, as is the urban renewal, the uh, 40R, the housing development incentive program, which are tax credits for market rate development. Um, we have uh, opportunity zone in there. We have, um, oh, what are the other two layers? I'm missing the cheese and the sour cream. I know I'm hungry. Um, uh, the downtown action strategy, uh, HDIP. Uh, we'll come back. And revitalization. And the historic. We mentioned that. That is our seven layer dip. Excellent. That's a lot. <laughs> well, the, the, it's, I think it's important for everybody to understand what the incentives are for developers to come in. And they've got various mechanisms that they can trigger to participate in investment in downtown Brockton. So I think that's uh, everybody should know that. So could you please name the seven again? <laughs> it's a <laughs> test. Yeah. So <clears throat> we start out with with the urban renewal district. We have um, uh, diff. Oh, thank you. That was the other diff. The diff district. The district. Diff district allows us to capture incremental growth that's happening downtown and reinvest growth into growth. Um, we have the um, uh, 40R smart growth, which allows for more dense development and uh, both residential and commercial development. We have um, the HDIP housing development incentive program, which is Mass 40V. That is a tax credit, a state tax credit for uh, market rate housing uh, in, in gateway cities. We have the historic uh, district, which allows us to access both state and federal historic tax credits. Um, we have the... There's two more. Opportunity Zone. Opportunity Zone, thank you very much. And new market tax credits. Had to pull that out somewhere. New market tax credits are um, federal tax credits for commercial development. Days, make sure you write all of that you down. You get an A. <laughs> I, get, uh, I also would be remiss if I did not introduce our, uh, our <coughs> vice chairman, Jerry Smith. And he's sitting here beside him, so I'd be remiss if I did not introduce him. Just Jerry. off camera. Just, just raise your hand, Jerry. Yeah. Yes. Yay. All right. Back out. All right. Uh, do we have any other questions? We got in a plan. Yes. I just have a quick question about the, um, the parking lot that you want to acquire on, well, it's Legion Park, <coughs> Frederick Douglass, next to the old security. Oh, federal. Mm -hmm. Security federal. Mm -hmm. Yes. I think. So, as you know, that also on that parking lot is the Liberty Tree. Yes. In that little park. So. Is it really a Liberty Tree? Yes, it is. It is. Yes, it is. Yes. Yes. 
it is growing. Yes, it is. Yes, growing. It is. And it's, and it's, and it's well, you open. better get out of your office, Walt. There, there are five I leaves. Know. There's five leaves on it right now. Is it really? It, so, I just walked by it today, so it, it, yeah. it needs some love. It does. So we're working on that. But um, with regard to that, um, we would like to acquire that, that parcel so that we can convert it into a city uh, municipal public parking lot so that other people can use it instead of just the um, people going to the beauty supply. Uh, we'd also um, like to preserve and officially own the Liberty Tree. Right now it's owned by a private person and they can decide to do whatever they want with it. Um, we've been really lucky that that, that owner has, has worked cooperatively with you know civic leaders but in the future, God only knows. So by us owning that, you know, it, it kind of cleans up um, that area, allows for some more surface parking, and saves the, uh, the tree. Do you, do you think that it would be possible to expand little, that little park? It could be. Just putting it out there. A couple of lawn chairs back there. Maybe a statue. <laughs> oh, that's a good <laughs> idea. Oh, of him. There were big plans 10 I years ago me. for a little park here. Really? On private, so, on private land? Well, steps would be taken to see if, you know. Okay, that's well, a good idea. The bank. The bank was. Is that yeah, a, the, bank, yeah, that was the bank owned it at one time. Yeah. yeah. That should be. Not Harbor One, one but the. It was, it was a mutual bank at that time. And what is the recommendation, Cindy? To not only acquire and, it, but expand the park. Okay. The land that the Liberty Tree sits on. Mm -hmm. Make us proud of that. Yes. I would say create a historic easement to protect mm -hmm. it into the future. That sounds good. Um, there was so a question? That was actually my question. <coughs> um, uh, whether there are any plans in place to put uh, green space um, in, in any of those areas or in the downtown area. Um, yes, there is. Um, there's a couple of different uh, activities going on right now. Uh, we've just finished up a, uh, a conceptual plan for what we call Sycamore Grove. The Sycamore Grove is the old bat terminal where the buses used to come. Several years ago, they moved it uh, to the other side of the tracks. But it's kind of a city parking lot and, you know, it's, it's behind Joe Angelo's and Tambu and Cristal and... And it's really, it's there, but nobody uses it much. And so the, the master plan that we've, we've created, and I should point out that's just outside of, just outside of the district. But there's, City Hall Plaza has this arm that connects down towards Maple Ave. And so we want to um, extend this streetscaping into Maple. And Maple, there's a, um, a bridge that goes into the park. Uh, Salisbury Brook Park, but um, this space that's uh, uh, currently a parking lot, we hope to green up, work with the existing restaurants that are on um, fronting Main Street, and allow them to be able to open up into the back. And if you were at Prava um, last summer, it was really successful. We'd like to, you know, have a, a stage and, um, you know, people could hold festivals and things like that back there. Um, or it could be a future home for Prava, but that's one of the areas that we'd like to see some green space expansion. Um, where is, ah, here's the rest of the maps. Yes. So one of the other areas that we would like to expand green space, here's City Hall Plaza, and this is that green arm that comes south. We would like to try to acquire some of this property along School Street. Right now there's a parking lot there. Uh, as we get more and more um, garage parking downtown, uh, we hope that that surface lot won't be necessary or as necessary and, and we can make more space available here but we would like to be able to have another arm of City Hall Plaza coming out and another arm coming north. Um, when Main Street becomes two-way, this preserves the view corridor. Um, so as people are driving you know, south on Main in five years, um, you'll, you'll still be able to, I hope, 
still be able to, to see um, uh, uh, City Hall Plaza. And then we hope to make some improvements to Legion Parkway down the center of Legion. Uh, instead of being all concrete, we'd hope to be able to expand that, soften it up, add some more trees, put some um, uh, dining opportunities along the sidewalks on the edge as we work with the businesses along the edges um, and, and green that whole area up. For over a decade, I've been hearing that Main Street is going, going to be two ways. When is this going to happen? Well, we have just about finished up our um, downtown traffic study. Um, we um, should have that finished by the end of June. And then we can then, uh, and as that's finished and it's approved by the city, then we can uh, apply for federal funds to start implementing that, that strategy. I recall within the last, maybe around five years ago, um, Senator Brady, I believe then he was a state rep, saying that $10 million had been appropriated for something for Main Street to be two-way. Ten. There, there is money that has been identified in a bond bill. And getting money identified in a bond bill as a potential investment and actually getting the $10 million are two different things. We'll continue to work with the state to get that. Changing all of this to two-way is going to be more than $10 million. And we'll have a conceptual, we'll have a cost shortly. The $10 million could match the federal funds that we uh, try to pull down. It could be used um, uh, to pick off pieces of, of the project. Um, but as you can imagine, switching from one way to two way is not something you can do gradually. It has to be all done at once. What about Warren Avenue? Are there any plans to make that two way? Um, yes, this whole, the downtown strategy uh, traffic study goes from commercial to Warren and they all interconnect with each other. So all the traffic signals are gonna talk to each other. They'll have, um, uh, emergency vehicle signal interrupts um, will improve the pedestrian environment. The actual walk and wait lights will really work when you push the button. What about Belmont Street between Maine and Warren? Would that also become two-way? I know that's outside of that, but... Um, yes, this would become two-way. Okay. Wow. While we're talking about Belmont Street and way outside of that district, um, the intersection of uh, Belmont and Pearl, I know a few years ago I spoke to the traffic commissioner and he told me that the state had given us a grant to fix that so that you can take a left off of Pearl to Belmont without risking your life. Mm. I would say you can still risk your life if you took that left. Right. Yeah. Well, no, and there was supposed to be a signal put in and it, ha it yeah, ha hadn't happened. Mm. I think this is like five years ago. I think um, OCPC has more information. Yeah, I'm not aware of that. Yeah. Yeah, it's, that's way out of the district, but yes, we're, yeah, I, we're working on that. I, I think we need to stick with what we're here for, okay? I, there's a lot of issues, but I think we need to stick to talking about the, um, this the district, district and, and what we're here for, and that's to discuss the 30 or 32 properties that we want to look at. Yes? So what is your plan in order to solicit the most... Um, comments and responses from the majority of the people that are directly, currently impacted by this area, i.e. the people who live here and the people who work here. Uh, there's people here today, and that's great, but mm -hmm. the, there's a whole lot more people that live downtown, and there's a whole lot more people that work downtown. And, and um, so my question is, how are you going to, you know, solicit the most amount of comments in order to address those people who are not able to come to meetings and therefore you're not going to hear their comments. Okay. We um, advertised this meeting. We set out flyers for the meeting uh, to try to bring in as many people as possible to uh, get your comments. Now, um, as far as going to various venues to solicit com comments from people who live downtown. There was no plans of that at this point. We just had, uh, we put out advertisements and we put out the word that we were going to be here tonight soliciting comments. So my comment would be, um, 
doesn't look like it really worked. Um, it was tried, it didn't really work. Uh, my comment would be, uh, you know, it, it's not hard to know where the people live. I mean, we know what buildings are occupied. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of people um, cannot come out to meetings at night. You can advertise with, and they can find out about it and know about it, but they can't do anything about it. So a lot of people just can't come out at night. Um, some people don't want to come out at night. Um, and furthermore, um, you know, some people don't want to speak in public. Um, and so my question is, you know, what other, I would recommend that, you know, there another process be put in place. Do you have a recommendation? I, I would recommend up? submitting, you know, making sure that every resident who lives in the downtown, you know who they are, give them a piece of paper and say, please submit your comments. You know, even if you can't be in person, we want you to hear, we want to hear from you. Um, so I think that that's doable. I mean, you've got the Dixie Building, you've got the 50 Center. Same way with the people at, um, you know, all the people that work at um, WB Mason. Yeah. You know, contact the, the HR person or whoever's in charge there and say, we need to hear from the people that are working in your building. We understand, they're not gonna stay here. Look, they've been here all day. They wanna go home. They don't mm -hmm. wanna come to a meeting here. But that doesn't mean that their voices should not be heard. We agree. And you have to get it from them. I, I don't think that you could take a passive approach. I think you have to take an active pr approach to this, which is go to them and get their comments. So working with our partners at uh, Mass Development, we have prepared and um, it, it's in draft form at the moment, but it's a investor's prospectus. And it, uh, it is aimed at uh, people who are interested in uh, bringing investments to Brockton. Uh, talks about our uh, geographic advantages and all the great things that are happening here in the city. And um, that will be going out to the investment community. It'll also, and money managers, people like that. Um, but it'll also be available on um, our webpage uh, once it's published. We're also working with the Redevelopment Authority on a request for qualifications. Uh, where they're going to be um, looking for uh, developers who are actually um, in the area um, or in uh, throughout New England. Um, so we'll look for small scale developers and medium and large scale developers. So um, we're working um, through the uh, Mass Development and the Brocken Partnership um, on that. Okay. I'm live. Um, Minority investors. Of course. Um, please. Yes. And, and developers. I, 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 can, I can tell you a little bit that they're it's working with the Metro South Chamber of Commerce and they had an event earlier this year and that recognizes women in minority owned businesses and banks and whatever. And, um, you know, all get together. It was that perfect place. And then, you know, it's free to anybody who wants to come and they start letting out this information. But okay. to and your it's point, to anybody to come to, yeah. we are looking throughout New England, just not within our Brockton circles, for minority women-owned developers, investors. Rob had mentioned sending out our prospectus yes. to money managers, hedge fund managers, people who are looking to invest their dollars and would like to invest their dollars in Brockton. And we don't care if your money's, as long as your money's green, we don't care what you look like. <laughs> All right. I just, because I, I don't know your name, and we are very few people of color here. What is your name and your, and your affiliation? Marlon Green. And Marlon? I do live in Brockton. I work in Boston. Okay. And what do you do, Marlon? I work in healthcare. I'm okay. a research manager. And he ran for city council of Ward 3. Okay. Would you like to make an investment? Yes. <laughs> All right. Excellent. Um, Angela, you're awful quiet, but I know you're planning a wedding, so I'm not going to stick you out, you know. Um, any other comments?
questions. As Rob had indicated, you can contact Zayas Andre at Z Andre, Rock and Redevelopment Authority dot com. If you really have to, you can contact R. Jenkins at Brockton Redevelopment Authority dot com. Um, our numbers are listed. These maps will be on our website, right, Zayas? Yes, it is. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, tell your friends. Um, we will get out a questionnaire. We'll work with the CAC to come up with, you know, just a form of basic questions. We've done this, thanks to council, we did this three, four years ago. Okay. Same thing. We'll get out comments, we'll get out our cards, we'll, we will still mail out and do our outreach. But I love the idea of just going straight to HR um, and saying, we need these filled out. Yeah, they do that school department. Yeah. Just one other comment. Um, that people in the audience might be interested in on TV. Um, to just quickly tell about the 32 properties, maybe some of the ones that are more well known. Sure. Um, some of the properties, uh, the 32 you're looking at, let's see if we can pick out a few. The blue. Um, Frederick Douglass, this is actually looking for the easement. Um, there are plans for Frederick Douglass, which is 11. 1115 Frederick Douglass? 11250. 11 11 11 15. 15. Right. Yeah, 11-15. 15. Thank you. Yes. Um, you look at this. We put this in. The, this is actually the Trinity. Is this the Trinity? Well, that's the garage. That's, that's the garage. a garage. This is a Trinity property. Right. You put the Trinity property in because at the time we didn't know if they were going to finish it. Trinity 2. And if they don't, we will. Okay. Um, some of the other properties. Stadelman Block. Stadelman Block. Yeah, Interesting Block. Block, which is L Street. This block here. Yeah. Um, how should I say this since we're on TV? We'd like to do this whole block. When you're doing urban revitalization, it makes sense if you do large tracks. Economy of scale. It's easier than trying to pick them off one by one. Um, and so it's in our best interest as a city to look at developing the whole block. You know this is going to be developed, but the rest of this needs to be developed. Okay. This needs to be developed. Rob, is there any... It's concern? almost all surface parking in the Stadlin block. The other interesting thing about this city, that, and, and just so you have an idea of my background, I worked in Boston and Dorchester and New Haven. Um, it's interesting that Brockton's, and I've even said this to the parking authority, our most valuable asset of real estate is all surface parking. Yes. And it's a little, it's just not usual to go in a city that has a commuter stop, three, and all of its surface parking around it. Even if you go out to, I mean, the suburbs, Westwood, you've been out there lately, what's the mm -hmm. store that's out there? And Wegmans. They, Wegmans, Wegmans, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's over, I think someone said over 3,500 units that's being <coughs> built around that train stop. Mm -hmm. That's what people are doing. People like convenience. And that's what we need to be thinking of. And the Corcoran building and the building Corcoran. Uh, uh, um, near the police that's station. That's outside of oh, the No, no, no. And those, those are not in the situation. And they're not in the district. Okay. However, you never talked about this. That's still outside the district. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But this Green Street and that was, those are already in the urban renewal. Um, there's, uh, at the end of Legion Parkway, uh, you might remember this, the city had blocked off the road for a while because there was a building, parts of the facade were falling mm -hmm. off and there's maybe a small yes. retail store and, and um, a pizza, shop pizza shop. Um, and then there's two floors above that that are just completely empty and open to the elements. And we need to work with that out of town landlord mm -hmm. and to, to do something to clean that up. And, it's, mm -hmm. and so we've identified it as a acquisition parcel. And acquisition doesn't necessarily mean that Robert's going to buy it. Acquisi I'm on TV so I can't say, I can't swear. But acquisition means that get your, get your crap together. Right, or do something. We're taking know. this seriously. Right. Uh, also next to the Alamo, uh, you might remember there was a fire in the building, and uh, it's been four years. Right. Nothing's happened. 
They've not come in for building permits. So again, we're lighting the fire underneath him and said, you know, let's Do let's get this right. Fisher cut bait. That's a clean way of saying it. Thank you. Thank you. But those are some of the properties Thank of the 32. If you're interested and need a list of the 32, we can get that to you as well. Now, fact, you might think 32 is a lot, but when you look at just the Stettelman block, right. there's... And most of it is surface parking. 15 parcels there. And, most and they're all surface parking. So it's like, oh my God, 30. It's like, eh, it's really... Yep. They're not all buildings. They're not all buildings. Right. Excellent. Thank you. All set? Great. We'll leave it to you to close out. Okay. Um, the other members of my, well, first of all, ju just a comment. I um, uh, want to thank you all for coming tonight. Um, good suggestions, great suggestion about going out and, and um, getting to other people. Okay, and we'll, we'll do that and we'll follow up on it. Um, please let uh, your friends and family and your neighbors know. Okay, like I said in the beginning, this is a very exciting time for Brockton. Um, I've been in Brockton for about 53 years, having moved here from Boston, and uh, I can't remember a time in those 53 years that it's been this exciting. All right, um, what, like I said earlier, walking up to the high school where the old high school was, walking by and just seeing business after business going out in the late 60s and 70s and the 80s. Okay, now we're coming back, okay? And um, it's very exciting. So to the rest of my members of the CAC, can I get a motion to adjourn? Motion, motion to adjourn. Can I get a second? I second a motion. All in favor? Aye. Thank you.